Hey everyone, Charlie here and welcome to another episode of LTP Masterclass where I delve deep into a particular piece of music and give a, a masterclass. Now, as I start these shows off, I usually, I mentioned that a normal masterclass is uh, basically when uh, I go to a college or a conservatory or something and I'm on a stage and then it's like a student and they come out and perform for me and an audience and uh, then I give a piano lesson to them in front of people. Now there's no one to play the piece but um, I'm just going to kind of give an online version of it where I'm just going to go over and give an in-depth kind of piano lesson on some of the things that I think about certain pieces. And this set is going to be on the Opus 25 Chopin Etudes. This is the second set, set of Chopin Etudes. I can't talk. This is the second set of Chopin Etudes. You can check out my previous, I think, five videos. I'll probably upload these in order. So previous five videos if you want more on the Chopin Etudes. And... Um, yeah, so this one's going to be on number six of Opus 25, which is known as the Etude in Thirds. Now, Chopin wrote number six, which was in thirds. He wrote number eight, which was in sixths. And he wrote number 10, which was in eighths. Eighths, octaves. Uh, so he didn't really think that out. But anyway, this is probably referred to as the most hard, the most hard etude, the hardest etude written, if not one of the most hard etudes written. Uh, because there's all these uh, thirds that run up the piano, right? Whatever the notes are. Um, and they are hard. Um, slow practicing techniques is what I encourage for most pieces, and this piece is definitely not an exception. Check out videos that I have on um, my Learn to Play playlist um, about that, because it's very helpful here. So you're gonna wanna play slow, and are you gonna to wanna to do long, short? Short, long. Staccato. Hard. And a combination of all kinds of stuff. Um, and that can be very, 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 very helpful. It is boring to play, to practice slow. It sucks, but it can work. Um, yeah, some things just suck, and that's one of them. Practicing slowly sucks, but it can be effective. Um, and in this piece, like all of them, make sure you don't get tight or hurt anywhere. Um, and if you do, stop, figure out how to not be tight and or hurt, um, and be sure in the future that you don't get tight and or hurt, because if you do, um, it can cause like permanent damage and stuff, and you really don't want that. Um, so yeah, if you ever get tight and or hurt, stop and figure out how to not be tight and or hurt. And then, um, yeah, don't don't be tight and or hurt. It's bad for you because it can cause permanent problems. Okay, so before we start, be sure to subscribe, like, all that good stuff here. Comment and on all the social media stuff. Let me know, have you played this piece? Have you uh, struggled with it? Have you mastered it? Do you want to play the piece? Does it scare you? Does it not scare you? Um, okay, let's get going. So. The piece is short, it's not that long. It has three sections, the beginning, the middle, and the end, which is basically like the beginning. Um, the middle has double thirds, so it has a section where you're playing, is in the right hand, and your left hand's playing something similar. Actually, that's not the right notes, uh, but we'll get there. Um, generally speaking, you wanna keep the right hand light, light. If you start like, like intense, it's gonna, you're gonna get tight, and if you get tight, it's bad for you, as we talked about earlier, but also it makes you slower and less nimble and it hurts and you don't wanna hurt and or be tight. So don't do that. Not only is it bad for you physically, but it also makes your playing suck. Um, so you wanna stay as light as possible. Of course, that's way easier said than done. Um, but generally speaking, the right hand can be very, very, very quiet and they're basically just chromatic things going up, right? chromatic thirds going up. What you want to do is the top note is way more important than the bottom note. So weight it to the top and don't worry about the, the I think it's thumbs and twos that you're playing on the bottom. You want the top note. You really want to hear. That's what you want to hear, right? So bring out the top notes. Right? So, start off as almost as like, this, like there's like a fogginess and there's nothing and this is just kind of coming out of nothing. I like coming up and then down. So it's like crescendo and then decrescendo in the second measure. Now you're 
your left hand. That's the kind of feel I like. I actually, it says crescendo all the way in. I don't like doing that. I like cutting up and down. It almost sounds like a, a Halloween song. Um, I'm like thinking of like some old like kids movie when there was like a or something like that. That just reminded me of that. I have no clue what that's from. Some movie. If you guys know, let it let me know in the bottom. It's like or something like that. Is that? Oh, I'm getting distracted. Anyway, it kind of reminded me of that. But close to the keys, close to the keys, and then when you're playing the thumbs, the thumb is important. That's what's kind of what it's important. And coming down. I like coming down. So the left hand shape shape. It's like a second time, right? So the right hand. The, the first few. I like kind of taking a little time. It really emphasizes. Especially here. In this part, you got the count. You have that melody, so bring that out. And the right hand's going. Just kind of floating around, but shape it. teeter-totter. Loosey-goosey, teeter-totter. So that one's the easiest one because all you're doing is you're playing like a G, what, G, B, D, and F, and then you're just splitting off. You're just moving down. Keep it loose, but light. Should be magical. The left hand. Crazy. So again, light, same thing here, just different keys. Here. And this is where you have the, the, the notes. Clumping them together can be helpful for practicing. Clump the notes together. And then you can split them up. So practicing helps. Sorry. Sorry. The top notes are the most important, right? The top 
and then the top the top of each section. So the top of each third. So there and then there. The bottom hand. The bottom hand doesn't matter so much, frankly. You're not gonna be able to hear it. You want to be together. You don't want to be. You want. So slow practicing can help with that. So we got. Keep it clear. Flutter pedal can be helpful here because you don't want it to be too blurry. Don't be afraid to take a little time though. At the beginning, placing the notes and also later on. Right? That kind of a thing. Playing deep in the keys can be helpful. Right? So when you have like a sudden thing here, you don't have to be but 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 just place the first few notes. piece but slow practicing is very very useful um, waiting it waiting it to the top of the thirds can also be useful and be sure to stay loose and stay not tight and make sure you are not hurting anywhere and again if you are any of those things stop and figure out how to not be any of those things um, not only is it uh, not only is it bad for the playing but it's also bad for you physically and you don't want any permanent damage because it can lead to permanent damage. To, 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 it can lead to permanent, those things can lead to permanent damage, that is, um, if you just power through it. So don't power through it. All right, so if you have any questions, comments, anything, let me know below. Check out, um, I, I, there's recordings of me playing it all the way through. Um, Vivace uh, is on Apple Music and Spotify and all that stuff, um, my first album. And I'll, there's also videos online, I think, on my channel and stuff of me playing it. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions below, and I'll see you in another LTP. Bye-bye.